Chlor and oxytetracycline are natural compounds discovered in the 1940s produced by Streptomyces species. Chemical modifications of these early drugs in the 60s and 70s led to doxy and minocycline, which are still widely used. The tetracyclines are protein synthesis inhibitors, which, like the aminoglycosides, bind to the 30S ribosomal subunit. Unlike the aminoglycosides, this binding is reversible, which makes the tetracyclines bacteriostatic. Specifically within the 30S ribosomal subunit, the tetracyclines interact with the 16S ribosomal RNA, and in doing so, they alter the tertiary structure of the ribosome. As a consequence of this altered tertiary structure, tRNA-mRNA interactions are prevented and translation is arrested. So those mRNA molecules that are being transcribed from the genome are unable to be uh, translated into protein. The tetracyclines as a class are broad spectrum agents. They have activity against gram positives and gram negatives, although resistance is quite common. So susceptibility testing is certainly recommended before using these drugs. In veterinary medicine, the tetracyclines have become increasingly common for treating uh, infections with otherwise resistant staphylococci, particularly methicillin-resistant staph pseudintermediates, doxycycline or minocycline have remained important uh, potential treatment options. And then as a family, our tetracyclines are very useful at treating our sort of weird and wonderful organisms. So intracellular parasites, things like rickettsia, unusual bugs, the non-cell wall containing mycoplasmas, and then vibrios and brucellas. Minocycline also has some unique characteristics. Within its spectrum of activity is stenotrophomonas, a lactose non-fermenting gram-negative rod that's intrinsically resistant to many antimicrobials and can be quite difficult to treat, as well as Mycobacterium marinum, so one of our non-tuberculous species. Pharmacokinetically, as we move from tetracycline to doxycycline to minocycline, we see increasing lipophilicity. So these drugs are better able to penetrate uh, our own cell membrane. So minocycline will get higher intracellular concentrations than will tetracycline, which is obviously a really important feature when trying to kill intracellular parasites. I hope this brief description of the tetracyclines was helpful, and if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. <music> <music>